This is a video to demonstrate how to replace a power supply fan, uh, specifically in an HP 6005 Compact Pro small form factor tower. Um, here's the fan in question and the power supplies inside the case, which I will open up now. So the first step is to remove the power supply. So in this uh, particular tower, it's quite easy. You just have to turn it up like that and it'll slide right out. There's nothing to unscrew. One thing before or during, you just have to remove the cables that are connecting to the motherboard. And it should come out very easily. So in this case, the fan is very noisy in this thing. And I've been wanting to replace this for a while, and I finally went and bought this fan. So hopefully that does the trick. I'll test it out later. Now, it is very important to cut off all power to the power supply before you do this operation, and especially before you open it up. So I'm going to move the tower case out of the way now that we have extracted the power supply. So that's what this one looks like. Um, I'll maybe leave the part description in the, or the part number in the description below. So there's, for this, uh, I have taken this apart once. And I'm just trying to remember how much I need to take apart. Because so I need to get access to the board inside the power supply. So I think we'll start by taking off the four screws that are connected to the fan. And to do this, you just need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now to gain access to the board, it looks like I have to remove the screw here. And one screw on the other side. And I'll probably just remove that screw right there that's connected to the power plug. And I think we'll be good. Those are appear to be the only three screws. Okay. Okay, so the whole thing actually comes off just like a lid. I just have one plastic zip tie connecting the cables to the to the lid here, but I can just kind of pull that off to the side. And what we have here is the board that the fan is connected to. So it's probably pretty important to ground myself, touch something metal, and also watch out for all the different capacitors and components that are just stuffed into this little tiny box. So it's fairly easy to find which cord is connected to the fan. Uh, for one, you just have to trace from the fan to the board. In this case, you can see it's right here. Some poor lighting. I'll turn the light on. Okay, so the fan cable is right down there, and I think I'll actually start by pulling the fan out a little bit. All right, okay, no, the cable's long enough to pull the whole fan out in one go. That's convenient. So, in my case, the cable is actually routed underneath another cable that's a little tighter to the board and uh, <clears throat> another small board that's kind of soldered onto the board. It's just kind of floating there, so you want to probably 
just be careful. So I'm going to reach in and just unplug this from the board. It'll be easier to maneuver that way. All right, there we go. So I'll set this off to the side and we'll take the new one out of our package. And this fan I ordered from a distributor in China and I believe it only costs, uh, well, it costs less than $10. I'll see if I can find a good link to put in the description below. Okay. Now I'm looking for, there we go. It'll actually show the direction most fa most fans that you find in a tower case. It's kind of hard to see, but we have an arrow indicating what direction the airflow is in. So we have the uh, side with all the information, the voltage and the average. The airflow is going this way. So we want to, and this is rather important. So we want to install this fan with the air going out that way. Just blow all the hard air, hot air away from this area of the, uh, the tower. So it looks like I just need to take a moment to feed the cables through a tiny little slot here on the fan. And then Okay, so I'm going to slide this fan into the slot. It is the perfect fit. And it's quite easy to plug the fan into the board. And I'll just show you where to do that. If I can get this to focus, that would be awesome. So you can see it's a little four pin connector. Okay, and the only four pin connector is the white one right there beside my finger. Very easy to find, very difficult to lose track of. And it should just slide right in. If you're getting a lot of resistance, be very careful. You don't want to bend those pins and or break them. All right, uh, and that's it. So, one thing I could have done is tested this fan before installing it, but uh, I think we'll probably be okay. So, just like that, and you'll see a bit of the fan exposed there. So when you're putting it back together, I wouldn't spend too much time trying to pry it over like what I just did. Instead, I'm going to hold it in place and thread these screws back in. Okay, time to install this back in the tower and test it out. All right, time to power it on. So I've been running the fan for a few minutes now and no noise, and that is awesome. So a quick test with just my hand on the back of the power supply, I can feel that fan running. Um, if I go up close, I can hear it running. Feels great, looks great. I'd say this is a uh, job complete. So 
hopefully this helped you figure out how to replace the fan in your own power supply and it's definitely an approachable easy thing to do so the way that i'll test this fan is with this uh old usb cable that i just modified uh what i did was just unsheath the wires from the uh casing and just have the ground and power wires exposed it's pretty easy to do if you ever need any kind of a uh, quick low diagnostic tool with a power source so i'm gonna plug this wire in here all you have to do is line up the wires with the applicable colors and it's fairly straightforward so let's plug this into our usb port and get this fan moving see if we can replicate the sound at all Okay, so you won't hear it uh, from the microphone on this headset, but when I have this um, fan sitting down on the table, I can hear the like I, I can hear the bearings, and it's actually vibrating quite a bit. When I hold it suspended like this, I can feel the vibrations. Um, so yeah, anyway, this is just more evidence that the fan needed to be replaced. And it doesn't make a heck of a lot of noise right now, but it does produce a pretty good airflow. So maybe I'll use this fan in the future for a, for a little uh, personal cooling device or something. But anyway, that's it. Thanks again for watching.